blessings. Welcome forward to Reasonings right here at Trail Life. I'm your host, Talaku the Great. All in the presence of my co-host, the magnificent High Priest of Far Perfect, Perfect love. Perfect love. Uh, blessings, you know, if you are subscriber, Virgin and Sister. You know, the last time we started, I would say a, a topic on, you know, the Rastafari theme and just giving some information and some of the cultural experiences we've had as our journey through Rastafari as well as some of the spiritual information and in the early years of this channel we had done some videos right and I think somewhere along the path we would have done subsequent follow-up video um, you know there is a, a cultural dichotomy for years between you know the Rastafari culture in Jamaica in terms of spiritual view and Christian culture so I'm, I know you know a lot of people look at uh, our image and the exclusive understanding you know is Rastafari right? and we're not denying that we've been through the heritage but again people still only assume that people looks like us only are thinking about Hallelujah Selassie so they don't realize that as we were saying ancient Hebrews which is our ancient heritage so the 12 tribes this was a prevalent image and as a matter of fact these are all the males appeared not just in decorum in terms of priestly decorum but in terms of general life and function hallelujah so we, don't, we need to address that as one of the, the core reasons why we're doing these videos so in some of the previous videos we examined different you know aspects of Rastafari culture and the dichotomy between when we got as the average person would say saved right and some of the things that we were going through so today we're going to talk about you know some of the I would say principles right and um, the beliefs of, of, of Rastafari um, you know some of the, the things that they adhere to as best as we um, know experientially and some of what we you know we research and so what we investigate is a, is a lot of information per se I'm not saying it's like so much information because there's a lot of stuff it's just what what is really relevant so one, one, one of the core principles of Rastafari, right? as what well, I can recognize, and I know there are many different early spiritualities that inspire the, the founders, like Hebert and Archibald and um, Turner, the Turner family, and also how it, but there's a lot of Masonic imagery and, you know, other spiritual ideology, a little bit of Bedouinism in there, right? But one of the core principles I would say to me looks back to a, what I would call biblically an Old Testament kind of belief. Okay, you know, so the rest of them basically read the Bible. You may, made allusion to this before, like, it's not like rest of them have a religious hallelujah, book that they venerate as their old book. Some people might contradict me and say, well, of course, there's a holy PB. There have been texts and material that has come out to different factions and and the intellectual plane and I guess people accept it as um, an indication because it's philosophical and it will be informational towards understanding perspectives in Rastafari but it, it didn't become foundational and I would say sacred text that every Rastaman read that but there's a commonality within the Bible that most Rastaman read the Bible especially the Old Testament and I would say that is more Judaic hallelujah tradition are the Judean traditions, right? A lot of that is in there. So I would say Rasaman of Awulpa Old Testament principle, like not cutting the ear, shaving the beard, not shaving the beard, not cutting the ear, how the women should behave. And you know, there are different houses, so some are more extreme on some of the Old Testament beliefs and ideologies, right? True. And also, you know, there is the veneration of Ayala Selassie. Eh? And you know that at first, maybe there wasn't necessarily this um only a religious view of Rasta but then a religious view at some point started within the same moon because I think the Gaviites were more Christian minded and I think some of them into the Hawaiites when they started venerating Iris last night were more apt to take uh, a Christian view like it was a prophetic return of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know? I don't think that is one of the, the belief systems. I don't think it's the only belief system. So now you have a Christian view that Ayala Selassie 
uh, let's say call it the 12 tribe of Israel view. Let's make it a little bit more relatable. I don't want to say it so blatantly. So it's like the 12 tribe of Israel view. It actually, as a house, a Rastafari, as a mansion, they kind of stick closely to the, the biblical narrative. And so that shows up as a Old Testament into a New Testament. You know, they would say, you know, Moses, Elijah, you know, those would be, and Noah, those would be like the, the, the characters, the prophets of the Old Testament and Mo Mosaic law, canon law, those things lead to world principles and government and everything, right? And then in the modern you now, it has said BC before Christ and AD after Christ to define time span and everything. So in the modern world, you know, you have the, the Judo, the Judaic and the Christian part of the thing, you know, right? And so you have the Rasaman, the 12 tribes you now have that, that kind of a view that Selassie is the return Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel are really, as it says in the Bible, scattered abroad and so we are the gathering of the 12 tribes when they declare I last night, you know, it's like they are gathering back into the fold so that now I would say when that argument comes up to me, for me personally you know, as a follower of Yeshua, I just say that um, basically the gathering of the people, you know is unto Rastafari right? because he's a defender of our faith. And what is the faith? <laughs> well, that's the faith in Yahshua Mashiach. You know, the faith in Christ as God on earth. And I think that is fundamentally to me some of the, the core principles and belief of Rastafari, right? according to the great God. I please the right? What are your takes on these matters? And, um, you know. Yes, brother, great all. Yeah, man. So Rastafari, you know, it is still developing. It's still in the development stage. There's no set principles and beliefs as yet. Some might claim there is, but you cannot have people that claim to be Rastafari and have different, different opinions and principles and beliefs and lifestyles. Because we used to live amongst them, you know, mm -hmm. daily amongst the Rastafari people. And we see how them live on a different type of Rastafari people because we go to the events. Mm -hmm. All of the events, Monday to Sunday, all the events me I go to. I take photos, I used to take photos of the Rastafari events. So I end up telling friends with them and because I see people for years. You end up get to know them and become friends with them, you know? And me realize that uh, every man pray differently. <laughs> and you have groups here uh, mm -hmm. who pray the same way. Mm -hmm. Different, different groups pray this way. Because, all right, you're going to have people who do. All right, start out with the idol man. Them. Mm -hmm. You have some idol man who are, are living to them and pray. Barefoot warrior, close out a crocus bag and them thing there, you know. Mm -hmm. Stick in a hand, a charge to Babylon, barefoot, head well crab up, you know. I meet up them type of man there, you know. Mm -hmm. Man chad to the hills, gone out in riverside when house there and thing, you know. I meet a next man a uptown rust now. I be a yoga and meditation, you know. <laughs> Holy pa, Buddha, you know. Some namaste and some nyam myoho renge kyo and holy pa things, you see me? <laughs> holy pa, witchcraft type of looking things. Because mm. a new age, you know. It's a new age Rasta that. Ah. So we have the Liberty Rasta, mm -hmm. we have the new age Rasta. Then you have the Africa Rasta. You have the Rasta man know everything of Af Africa. In clothes, African clothes. In speech, is of African, you know, wisdom and mm -hmm. information. True. Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know? A Mahat them deal with. 42 laws of Mahat. Cause me used to do them things there too, you know. Cause I don't get it twisted. Me used to be all of the Rasta man there. Cause me, when me used to be full Rasta man mm -hmm. I combine everything what makes sense to me mm -hmm. 
So I combine the liberty life, barefoot. I also chat barefoot. I combine the Africa. You know, I also dress like Africans with my key upon thing. You know, Ethiopia emperor. You know. I also do the yoga, the meditation. <laughs> I combine everything what I learned from all of these Rasta people. Mm -hmm. You know? And still I combine the Bible, but I never come understand the Bible fully at the time. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at the revelation and I say, who can open the seal? And I say, none other than the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> and I say, Sister yes. <laughs> yes. And I saw me get deceived now. I say, oh. I still I see a God man. See me in the Bible, man. Nobody can bust the seal. Him one. I still I see alone. You see me? So I say, well, I still I see a God man, the King God, come upon earth in the last couple of years, you know? Not too long ago. Mm -hmm. God come chad the earth. So he used to think, you know. Come mm here -hmm. chad and I try to find truth. You know, we also listen to the <laughs> See there? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I pause, you know? Yeah. But cramp and paralyze. You see me? We yeah. also listen to the Mouta Baroka every night or so. Yeah. Yeah. I get information because the man have enough information, mm -hmm. enough wisdom, but not every information and every wisdom is of God. True that, true that. True that, 100%. Because some of you find out them man they used to go to Catholic church mm -hmm. and get forced for God and them things they saw. For him experience of anything Christian like was horrible. Mm -hmm. So me understand so well, him have a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. You know, him not come to the truth yet. You know? Because him supposed to highlight Christ, highlight the Bible. Whatever name, him come to fame knowledge for know the true name of Christ. Because mm -hmm. we burn me out and say, I'm not deal with Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not deal with no God, you know. You see me? Mm -hmm. And come up with semantics mm -hmm. and, and gone from the point. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is not an at, attack to Muta, you know, but them man that help me learn about Rastafari mm -hmm. and learn information in the earth, you see me? But I realize, oh, they saw him go wrong. Mm he -hmm. now follow Selassie. He not follow what Selassie say. He mm -hmm. might say he know Selassie um, speeches and rare, mm -hmm. but when he come to the Bible and Christ, he not follow through mm -hmm. and say the right thing them and do the right thing. He not lead people to Christ mm -hmm. as what Selassie say you do. Mm -hmm. But he might work on the liberation here. Mm -hmm. He might try to liberate the people. Mm -hmm. But we need true information. That is of Christ. You see me? But them man they used to be my teacher. Listen to him. Get enough knowledge, I'm not in a line. Enough information. Enough things open my eye. And I give thanks for him. You see me? And I pray for him. So Christ can touch him and show him say I'm real. You know? What do you say? You know, uh, high priest of fire, as you talk about, you know, you know, particular individual, you know, Muta Baruch. As a poet, you know, I experienced him personally in terms of interactions, right, you know, being there and even reasoning with him on several issues and points and, um, you know, I called this program one night with a long debate, uh, you know, about light and shadow. I can't do my mentality was at the time. Nothing to write home about except to say that, you know, I would say that in the same place, you know, light and shadow occupies. And he would say, you know, there is no difference, you know. And I would clearly say that there is a difference. And he would not say it's an ideology to, um, you know, look at light and shadow as anything else more than night and day. And so, he is a very naturalist personality. And I think you know, get to depths of reasoning. It's not that he denies a creator or the ultimate source of existence. I think, in retrospect, not to get lost on, on him because we're talking about principles and belief and he's a unique character that we have come to learn from I used to listen to his program when I was 10 years old going to high school and I listened up to that point where you know I was I think I superseded the information that he was given and thought hallelujah 
it was no longer necessary. To be honest, the most I it was about 2011, 2012, when, we, when, we find, when Christ finds them and get saved, hallelujah. Never need to listen to Mota again because everything we must say now, the Lord just show me information. Anyway, back to the point I was saying originally that I think it's not really denies that it's a source of existence. I think it's denying the whole construction of the idea of how God is brought to us. And it's like, you know, so I said, the idea. And people tell us to say, he's saying God is an idea, hallelujah. No, he's not saying God is an idea. He's saying there's an idea of how God is, who God is. And that is given to us through the Europeans who have constructed a religious book that is mistranslated, falsified information because he does understand that there's exegesis and hermeneutics and he's more into history. And so, for him, Lassai is not a god because he doesn't have a god concept to say a man is a god. I'm just going to make clear now. So, Muta, people understand him. So don't think I, Hollywood, don't understand you. So him don't have a God concept as God being a man. So I'm going to worship a man, I'm going to worship Al Selassie. So Al Selassie to me is supreme being. Beingness is existence. So you call that iconography. So you call Al Selassie in his mind iconoclast, right? That is an icon that inspires his sense of self and identity. Because like you said, Muta bring information to you. But you now put Muta in the stead of being Christ because your sense of self is deeper than a metaphysical natural understanding of existence as in beingness so in so Muta that said you have supernatural belief man, because God is supernatural God is more than just the natural you can debate it but that's why I'm a follower of Yeshua because I believe in the supernatural and that's why I be there if I did not believe in the supernatural, hallelujah, I would not be believing in Yahshua Mashiach. Because you're going to say, a man is God. I said, yes, which man is God, hallelujah. Well, Yahshua Mashiach, come to us, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is man and God. Adopt me, I say. So you call that a religious belief. The function of that religious belief is spirituality but it's a religious spirituality and it can inform worldview political ideology ideology deportment behavior um, etiquette hygiene consummation food family relationship and guess what it is codified in ancient law that we've been living a certain principle and the Amashia came hallelujah to renew our souls and to bring the advocate for the truth of our soul into manifestation as, as, as God had promised Adam, Hallelujah, and Eve for the reclamation. And so this is my belief, understanding, overstanding, and that is why I follow Christ. I don't use semantics like Christianity and those that are political terms that are registered um, trademarks that has to do with codes. Christian codes and chattel and property and dumb divorces. The dumb divorces, the Shekwave are the papal bulls, right? These edicts and statutes and codes, right? That all aboriginals, people of the ancient houses, as chattel and property, right? But we are of the ancient kingdom in memory, not near under the sun. So we are returning through Christ to our true heritage, right? The righteous heritage of the children of Adam and Eve, those who know what is sealed, right, and could survive as a new branch. So when we say we are talking about anthropology to you know, high priest of Allah. And so when we are about Noah, a lot of people don't recognize that that is not just a biblical story, but an anthropological historical event that many cultures witnessed have recorded within their culture. And all that's different is the semantical and the nomenclature of who the name of Noah is. Or who the name of the captain of the boat or the visionary or the sea of which God gave the word to. Right? That's the only difference. Look into the, 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 the epic of Gilgamesh. You'll find a flood in there. Right? So, and several other places just to say, right? The, and and the Spirit is saying, the Inuma Elish talks about Torah. Um, the, the flood as well as, well as the, the ancient book, the Torah, which is the law. So, what we're saying is that ideologies develop around world events. And so, 
when the Bible is examined, people abstract ideologies from it a lot. And the ideologies solve whatever worldview. And so the Rastaman within the African and returning to the Ethiopic view, because Ethiopia was mentioned several times. And so they take that view and reclaim a sense of pride, of heritage. Because remember, you know you're under chattel slavery, under um, occupation, invader status, all those things. So you lose sovereignty. So you can't, that's it, say it's it. All right, it's like, um, for the wicked carried us away, captivity required of us a song. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down and there we wept. When we remember Zion, for the wicked carried us away, captivity required of us a song. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So because of historical movements, we are subjugated, carried around, to the four corners of the earth, meaning the four quadrants, east, west, north, and south, scattered are we without language, kindred, and tongue. Reading really a Babylon, they want us to sing and dance, be a gooning buffoon in buffoonery, entertaining, entertaining, idiot, perfect idiot. As well, Miss Lucy, when they educate you and turn in a dopey and dunce and fool. Carry us away captivity, no required of us a song. You want us to sing the songs that we sing when we're in Zion, the way we blew the shofar and the separate team, the, ter the, 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 the terror and the separate team, yeah, and the gondala, um, terror, long note, yeah, the, 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 the shofar from the age of the ram, the love of Moses from the mosaic law. The scepter shall not depart from a Yoda, nor the lawgiver from under his feet. This culture that we've been living, that's what we see and we are reclaiming. And so we are here under this subjugation. And so along the way, you know, Rastaman engrafted an historical figure to represent that hero, that liberation, that is promised metaphysically and some, like Muteo, that says supernaturally in Jesus Christ. And so here we know the beliefs differ but to the result remain the same. What do I mean? I mean people who are Rasta might not say, some, I'm not saying all, might not say Yahshua Mashiach, them say Selassie. But what is the aim towards liberating Israel? The aim is towards returning to sovereignty. The aim is towards going back, like I said, my view was to the Old Testament traditions, hallelujah. And I feel said. That's the driving force in a lot of the ideologies I see in modern Ethiopianism within Rastafara, high priest of Farah. Yes, brother Great Tool. I may recall Bob Marley, man. Because Bob Marley would have been the, I, the iconic character of Rastafara. Can you say Rastaman? When you say Rastaman, you say Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. You know, and for those people in the world now, because Bob Marley, they would have seen as a Rasta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no, yeah, they would have known nobody else per se like that. Probably him son, them, you know, mm -hmm. or some Alba Rosie. But a Bob Marley, people would have used to say, all right, this man is a Rastafari man, Rastafarian. And the things that he must sing about and I say, it represents Rastafari. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know? And then Bob Marley, one of Bob Marley's teachers was Marty Moplana. True. Which I met in my life, I spent time around, studied around. True. And according to what we know, the man, they love Christ, mm -hmm. love the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I saw Bob Marley grew up on them teaching them. Christ and Bible, but him, he would have talk him experience them in the song them, you know. Mm -hmm. Some might negative, some positive, you know. Mm -hmm. 
what time experience him attack. Mm -hmm. So it's just a man journey, you know. Mm -hmm. Him does a every man of them journey, every man of them experience. True. But the thing with the Rastafari, most man of them own philosophies. You see me? Yeah, you may talk to a Rasta man down the road, you know. The things what he must say, totally opposite from our next master man up the road, <laughs> you know. So that's my problem with Rastafari. That's why evil, we are hope to shape Rastafari into a one order. You see me? To organize and centralize Rastafari. Because it's still not organized and centralized yet. All if are fighting in a different divisions of Rastafari. You know, I should have just one, one organization, one. Organize, huh? Why we have so much divisions and philosophies and practices? Should have one thing, man, one thing. So every man who say how oh, them are Rastafari, a one order. Just in a unified principle. Yes, I. Because uh, when well, we look at it, you know, I mean, like Rast you just say one uh, unified principle, one structure, our basis of philosophy, belief, ideology, sacred information, and uh, the Rastafari of a creed. Right, but they said the infants be nourished, you know, the elderly be protected and, you know, you know, the, the hungry, you know, be fed. And I think this creed is, like I say, it's an Old Testament creed and they might have adjusted it um, according to the different mansions who might adhere to this. But I know it is synonymous with Rastafari. The need to preserve family and community in an organic, or uh, uh, what I say, organic is a political way, in a natural way. A way that is a custodial way, which is custom. Custom is tradition, which is been through time, become customary. And societies are, that are all tatinous, meaning that are governed through natural law, common law, you know, it's, it's the, it is customary, meaning the laws are based out of custom, which are based upon behaviors. So, Rastaman would say a lot of, you know, Christian churches have different denominations. Mm -hmm. which is to suggest um, different ideologies as well within the family. So they don't think the different houses on the mansion, like the 12 tribes, makes them different, are the different ideologies. But what I do understand, what you are saying, as opposed to just a, a regular person saying this, you are informed and you are experienced. So you're not just talking at a lower level difference, you're talking something deeper. So the thing is this, the depth you're talking about, like I said, is a unified principle. Rastafari don't have a single sacred book that they go inherently from the principle. Because if you say the Bible, you have um being the born Bible. Apology, right? So therefore, you have the twelve tribes we use Bible. You have other Rastafari groupings that might use Bible. But as you said in previous videos, they translate into an ideology, making it a weird construction. Because meaning, if you or I read it, ever said Jesus. You get what I'm saying? So when the priest reads and I say Selassie over the word Jesus, if me you're going to the Bible to say Jesus, so what does that mean? It means without the ideology in our mind, we would not dare say anything else but what's written there. So I they use the book according to its structure, according to its, its, its inherent function, which is to edify us and inform us of our past experiences, a historical document. As that's why it's called a book of accounts, testament, right? Testimony, testament is what happens. And a book of prophecy, what is to come in the events of life. So if you don't see it as a metaphysical book, or if you do see it as a meta metaphysical book, use it as how it is instructed, as how it is designed, right? However, the Rastaman don't have that singular structure around an ideology. They meet a lot and at certain points and try to work out differences but with the millennium congress it's about a thousand different views as you have expressed which we know as real life all right so 
The Lord that, that told me to say this before, so I have to say it as a differential between myself and you. When you don't go to Rastafari, right? You are seeking a certain depth of truth in understanding and Rastafari, as you said, you had an admiration for the, the way of life and therefore you, you could see Selassie intrinsically as God. I had a different view. When I was 14 years old, my first brush with religious life started and I, I just one day get up and said I'm a nun confirm this hallelujah Christian, right? Now I say it this way because I was 14 years old and we are talking about things, right? So I said I was a nun confirm this Christian. I said, what well, I said is, the Spirit said to me, say, can you know in the ideology and the belief, belief, belief that people are deal with? Because you are dealing with the real thing, you are 14 years old, right? When I came to the realization of spirituality and seeing the future and then going through what I've already described in my testimony happened to me at 12 years old, I'm going to come through you now and reach up to the point where I'm at and reach through your life as a young adult. This is around my document. Everything could not be said on there. There are a lot of editing. Anyway, so when I was at Tree Alive, when I came into the Rastafari viewpoint, I said to who I thought I was communicating as God, as a supreme being, that I didn't accept religious figures as being manifestations of God, right? So I got at their rituals. So when I was speaking to God, I said, if Selassie, I know God, you know, me done with Selassie as this God complex, you know. I mean, I go wherever it's say the truth I lead because the truth me I deal with. So when I try life, I'm start getting into spirituality and start learning about Silas, you know, and the depth of things. I actually, my, my belief was around a unity principle. And my unity principle was true life. So people saying that, what does he mean? I said it. You might not understand, but I'm going to say it again. True life. True life, to me, was the essence of my religion and my religious identity. Hallelujah. And everybody who came to Tree Alive, whether you are Rasta, Christian, Buddhist, Jew, you would say you are Tree Alive. Because an ideology developed around Tree Alive that was a unity principle, right? So, why do I say reasoning at the Tree Alive? Right? And why do I retain Tree Alive? Because during the process of my awakening, the Lord came to me and He said, Jerome, do you know why you found strength in sitting at this tree every day, reading mantras, reading books, reading information, and praying? But I didn't know I was, hallelujah, I was praying. I didn't know that I was praying. Yeah. I said, why? He says, people are saying in the environment at a college, you guys are worshiping the tree. He said, do you know, hallelujah, I am the tree of life? I said, Father, what are you saying to me? Hallelujah. He says, Jerome, I, your Lord and Savior, hallelujah, are the tree of life. I am the living tree of life life and I said wow and so when I took to that understanding now and I said tell me what is life and then I started getting the information and I realized it's so deep and intense so I said oh that is anthropology what is quantum mechanics what is advanced thesis and, 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 and advanced mechanics and whatever Whoa, that is futuristic design and, and dimensional um, warp drives and, and this is homeostasis design and I was like, the word of God, just tell me to say one more thing. During this stage, I believed in great knowledge. And I found that all the books were to me branches of knowledge of the tree of life. Because I said the tree of life was within. And so I had a vision one night, and the Lord, uh, 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 angel of the Lord, brought me the Bible. B I B L E people, yes, brought me the Bible. I saw angry in my spirit, I tore the Bible up. And it, and it tore into like five pieces. When I looked, I saw the five pieces were books. The Emerald, the Tablets, the Bhagavita, and all these multiple vast books, the Numa Hellish and all these books that I had read and wanted to read and books that I had experienced with. The Spirit of the Lord, the Angel of the Lord, wasn't angry with me. He gently went and picked up the books, the piece together. Please, please stay with me. Pick them together. And put them together and gave them back to me because I was pleased to see uh, those books, right? Emerald keys, all those books, right? Mm -hmm. Gave them back to me. When I looked in my hand, it was a Bible again. So when you hear me, I talk. When I talk, I'm not ideological. I'm talking experiential. An experience I had. I believe you call it a personal experience religiously. That's what I'm talking from. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. Oh, you want to hear the next part? No. Huh. You say, eat it. 
אם זה איטית, אנא ישראלית איטית, תחומר סבבה, אנא ישראלית איטית. אתה זון בי בזה, מה עם אקסה סמארט, מה עם אקסה וייז? So, in understanding one's core beliefs and principles, when I was at Tree of Life, coming to understand Tree of Life, that's why I came to find Christ, that's why I came to find God. And so, having an image wasn't necessarily connected to just an ideology with me. I was seeking truth. So it was easy for me to discern the differentials between, you know, a man who have followed Christ, who have followed truth, and a man who have followed his own mind. And I think, What I see intrinsically, sometimes within a lot, I should say, within the um, Rastafari community, is a lot of self-willed individuals that are almost do what they will. Though some of them perception is a naturalist-based perception or animist-based perception, it is still do what they will. Because here we go again, not a religious point, just a fact of observation. If Slassi is your God, for those who say he's your God, For those who say he's your king, for those who say he's supreme being. Hear me now. If he's God, he says things that becomes law of existence. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for the law, I still say you're God. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you say he is king, king makes laws and decrees. Well, you know, for the laws and decrees are your king, Selassie. Right? Go on next week, you know. If you say... is supreme being well the supreme being said Christ is God and the supreme being said some other things too so why do you not believe the supreme being which you say a supreme being and a me say so a you say so mm. so you say so you know and a me say so mm. so oh you now follow the dictates because the supreme being said Christ is God and follow Christ but you say a supreme being then the ultimate being that I preach the fire. Yes, brother, great all you. Yeah, I like how you bring up that man. A real talk. Because the name Rastafari. And that I come from the name Haley Selassie. You used to name that before him changed the name to Haley Selassie. Or, or fully used the name. The coronation. Because I guess from him born, him have the name from a long time. You know? From him Christian. Um, from when he baptized, mm -hmm. him get that name Haley Selassie. Mm -hmm. But uh, originally a Rastafari. Mm -hmm. You see me? Uh, so if you are claim to be a Rastafari, mm -hmm. Ian, mm -hmm. if you are claim to be a Rastafarian, a real talk, you must listen to Rastafari. King Rastafari said, if you look to the Bible, Christ are the way, the truth, and the life. Listen to the king. Read up the king. Read him works. Watch some interviews. Watch some documentary. Take him in. Learn about the king and how they love Christ and the Bible. Yes, I. I just said, you know. So as you look at the philosophies, opinions, and principles and beliefs of Rastafari that originated right here in Jamaica, we're just imploring you, whatever your journey along the, the lineage of your individual, our Tatinous nature, to return to sovereignty in Christ Yeshua. I should just be thankful for those who have guided you along the journey, the great teachers, the matriarchs and the patriarchs, those that have been in physical manifestations and the inspirations they gave you towards why you end up reading the Bible, why you end up in the tabernacle, a beat German a chance, so that's it, or even why you end up, you know, at a church speaking in tongues, like myself, yeah, or, you know, why you find yourself living, you know, the way of life that was more Um, metaphysical and magical to a life that is more humble and you know in right alignment with nature and creation and following a more what I call religious life which is a religious spirituality is to do unto others you have them do unto you under thy mother and thy father and to love God with all thy heart 
and that's from it. And, uh, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we have these principles that some people say was abstracted from other principles, but we have ten commandments or ten major principles brought down into two principles that you always say. And, and the principle is just really what Christ said in this really love. Love casted out a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. I chased a multitude of sin. I covered a multitude of sin. You know it verbatim, at least you should know it verbatim. I always tell you, you know, I don't always say it verbatim because I know the implication of the intrinsic nature of what I say. Just say if you truly have love, if you find the knowledge of God and Christ as self, it generates a higher vibration and that vibration is love, which is far above judgment, ideas, belief and attitude. Right? So we are imploring you. Love the most I got it all your heart. Keep on your path of truth. Maybe just where you are, but there's more to go. And so until next time, it's been Talaku the Great Owl. A reasons right here to share life. Just remind you to love, like, share, and subscribe. The Trail Life Experience right here on Sealand Media on YouTube in the presence of my magnificent co-host, High Priest Afara. Perfect love. Perfect love. I, 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 I,